Good morning. It is a joy to see each one of you here this morning. I need to turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. Whether you're Zooming, whether you're listening on YouTube, or whether you're here this morning, it is a joy to see each one of you. We gather today and we are starting the season of Lent. So most of you know me, some of you might not, but one of the things I like to do is uh, think a little bit differently about subject matter occasionally. Uh, Springer or Nafziger, I don't know which one it is, but, and I'm playing with the mic here for feedback too. When we enter the season of Lent, we think about giving up, don't we? What do you give up for Lent? That has historical basis centuries and centuries ago. But I think this morning we want to focus a bit differently on what Lent is and what this journey together is as we as we do something we've done for, uh, well, I've done it 70 years, some of you more, some of you are only on your first or second journey into Easter. But in our passage today, and I've talked with Jessica, so I have permission to say this kind of thing, there's a word that keeps coming up and coming up in, in the psalm, and it's called wait. What does it mean to wait? How is it used? What's the context? I want to propose a new way of looking at it in my mind. When you go into a restaurant, there's usually a line of people, men or women, kids, older, younger. What are they called? What are they going to do for us when you walk into a restaurant? wait. They are called the wait staff, which I find interesting. And what are they going to do for us? They're going to serve us. So as we journey into Lent this year, I get to say this because I'm the first one, right? Think about what it means to wait and serve if you use the word wait, you have to use the word serve. If you use the word serve, you have to use the word wait. Think about that as we journey this coming number of weeks, if you would. For a call to worship, if I can see that, there we go. Let's share together. Teach us your pathways, O oh God, our eyes and our souls are trained on you. Other paths have left, left us lost. Other ways have left, left us confused. All of your paths are love, made smooth by your faithful walking. We are led into your truth by following the tread of your feet. Creator God, sustainer of life, giver of all good, giver of challenges, giver, giver of life, may we journey and tread in the path that you put in our hearts, and our minds this Lenten season. In Jesus' name, amen. So we kind of introduced a little bit um, last week that we are going to embark on a different sort of practice in our worship services um, for the season of Lent. And it's in your bulletin, it's called Setting the Scene. It's a way that together we are going to create the visuals for our worship season. And today is um, a way that everybody can be involved. 
Um, some people might call this a children's time. The children will be involved, but we really want everyone to be engaged in this time. And I also want to say that we want to embrace the noise and the chaos that may come with this. It's kind of like when we pass the peace or greet each other. It gets noisy, it's a little bit chaotic, but it's part of our worship. Um, and Paul, I forgot to mention that towards the end of this time, there's gonna be a video with a song to play. So as we start to wrap that up, it should be in the slides. So, um, so I'm gonna start by coming right on back here to where most of the kids are. And I would like to invite anybody who would like to join me to play a little game. Does anybody wanna play a game with me? You can stand up. We're gonna play follow the leader. Anybody who wants to join can join us. Yeah. So I'm the leader, follow. If you wanna bring them, you can. You can bring your feet if you wanna play follow the leader with us. Your cut out feet. We're gonna go up here. Oh, let's remember, stay close together. Yep, just like that. Our journey toward God leads us on a path, kind of like following the leader. We can end up over here together if you wanna take a seat. Sometimes we stray and we don't always stay in line very well. You guys are pretty good at staying in line. You must've had a lot of practice. But God is always with us, gently guiding us back onto the path. So this week we have our for the season of Lent, we have this table and the bird up, up there to represent our path, the journey that we are on, that God is leading us on. And we have footprints. Some people have made those ahead of time and some haven't. And so we have a couple places where there is paper, um, pencils and scissors that you can trace your foot and cut it out. And we're gonna add these to the path. So I don't think many of the kids or any of them have done that. So kids or anybody who hasn't cut out a footprint and would like to go ahead and find a station where there's um, paper and stuff and you can embrace the noise and the chaos and go ahead and trace your foot. So come on over here. You guys can pick out a piece of paper and a coloring pencil. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Oops. Pick out a, there you go. She's all right. It's okay. She wants to get down. There we go. Thanks. Okay, if you guys need to help each other tracing your foot, or I can help somebody. You don't have to take your shoes off if you don't want to. You can leave your shoe on and just trace it like that. Your foot might be too big, I don't know. Uh, uh, noise is something we uh, kind of put out of Lent sometimes, but I'm sure there was chaos and lots of steps being done during the season of Lent. Do you need help? Here, let's trace your foot. As we're doing this, I had the thought um, in preparation this week that if we help each other out with this, it's kind of like the same posture we take when we wash each other's feet. So maybe this is one of the ways that we serve, just like we do on our journey and on our path. And you could always add your foot to the path later if you don't get it done today. This will stay up throughout the season of Lent. If you have um, 
a footprint that you did during this week and you brought back with you, you can go ahead and come on up and we're gonna place them along this table. Um, they can be on the table. If we have too many, maybe we can put them kind of along the floor where people aren't gonna fall on them or trip on them. Um, and we place them next to each other even to represent that we are mentoring each other and we're walking this path alongside each other. So you can come on up and place your footprints along the path if you have them ready. Okay, you can just put it up here on the table if you want. Wherever you want. No, not in the bowl, on the table. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Got her? Okay. You'll see that in the center of the path, there is a bowl. And the bowl is to remind us of how God wants to fill us. And the roundness of the bowl reminds us of God's never ending love for each person. As people finish adding their feet to the path, Paul, why don't you go ahead and play that song for us to help us transition into the rest of our worship service. It should be in the slides, yeah, it should be the next slide. I invite you to join us in singing today. Um, if you feel comfortable standing for the first two songs, you can. We'll sing three all together, uh, but the first two will be very familiar. Uh, God is here among us will be the first one. We'll just sing verse one. God is here among us, come with adoration. Fervent praise and expectation. God is here within us, known beyond believing. Soul in silence, all receiving. God will name and will claim those he held as lowly. Verses 1 and 3, to God be the glory. 
To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things. He hath taught us great things he hath done. So let our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, that purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. You may be seated. Uh, number 155. And Paul, I think verse 3 ended up on the slide, but we're not singing verse, verse 3. So it'll just be verses 1 and 2. This is a, more of a contemporary song, and we'll sing it for you uh, once. We'll sing, sing verse 1 for you, and then we'll invite you to sing verses 1 and 2 with us. It goes like this. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing down. I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need one and two. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing down, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, there's love you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh, God, how I need you.
lots of pairs of feet, shapes and sizes. Just like the kingdom of God, shapes and sizes, different people, different personalities, different thoughts, different lives, but we do follow the same path. Let's bow for a prayer for the offering and how we can serve. Lord, you bring us together once a week, sometimes more often. Sometimes the storms of life get in the way and we can't be here. Something happens. We're ill. We don't feel quite right. We're gone. But Lord, we unite today as we share of the abundance that you've given us. Got our thoughts and our minds as we return to you, that portion that you ask. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a prayer of confession. Talks about Ash Wednesday. There was a big celebration on Ash Wednesday, you know, down south. It was the last day, I believe I got that right, of Mardi Gras. If only we could flip what that celebration is just a little bit and get it to focus in ways we really understand. Let's have a prayer of confession together. God, on Ash Wednesday, we remembered our humanity, our fragility, our limits, our sinfulness, our need for repentance. Today, we come to you with this fresh on our minds as we continue our Lenten journey. We so often focus on the difficulty of our walk with Christ. Forgive us, Lord, when on our journey, we forget your extensive covenantal love for the world. You are beloved. Let's pray together. Lord, we give thanks for this journey, for the leadership, of this congregation, for your leadership, for your waiting on us, for your serving us as we wait and serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. For our scripture reading this morning, I think I'm gonna to have to ask Kelsey not to use this color this color gives me fits. I'm sorry. I got to say that before we start because it's a long passage. It's funny how that works. Thanks a lot, Jessica. <laughs> this is one of those passages that I read and I read and I read. And every time I read it, I, I, I found something different. So don't expect all of that to come out as we share it together. In you, Lord, in you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. <clears throat> According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. 
They will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how they fiercely and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you have done for us, for the message, the thoughts, and the sharing that you have put on Jessica's heart. Open our ears, our minds, our thoughts, and our hearts. In Jesus' name. Good morning. So I'm wondering what some of you might be expecting or thinking about regarding the message this morning, you know, especially with the little experiment that we did and and maybe if you read through the midweek connection. Um, no worries if you didn't read that i'll explain what i'm talking about as many of you know we um, send out some thoughts during the week to prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship service and the coming Sunday. And this is a good thing that we do it's a really helpful practice, I think. But this week, for some reason, the thoughts that I had swirling around, I just couldn't put into well-made sentences and cohesive thoughts. So I took a vulnerable step and just shared my somewhat fragmented thoughts in the midweek. Thoughts such as, sometimes seasons have clear beginnings and sometimes they don't. Sometimes a season begins, but it still looks like the old season at times. A season indicates a hefty length of time. We might say it's like being in it for the long haul. Beginnings. Beginning can be scary. Beginning can be exciting. Beginnings can be hopeful. Beginning can be hard. Beginnings can be all of these even at the same time. Sharing these thoughts with you all today and throughout this week just felt like what I needed to do to begin to make sense of what it means to be in the season of Lent this year. We're in a church season of 40 weekdays before Easter Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Like our weather seasons, this season has one clear starting day, but sometimes being in the season doesn't actually feel or look any different than the previous season. This past Wednesday was the beginning of Lent, a day that many Christians call Ash Wednesday, and they gather with their churches for prayer and worship, and often receive ashes on their forehead or hand in the sign of a cross. Like the other seasons of the year, some things remain the same, but there are differences too. We don't receive ashes every week, but we do uh, many Christians do practice this for this special season, and it serves as a reminder that we were formed from the dust, and to dust we will return. It's a clear beginning for this season with a very honest and blunt reminder about our humanness. Death is a part of the story. It's a part of our story, and it's part of the story of Jesus. Faced with this reminder, we have a choice what we do with it. Does it rule or determine our thoughts and actions, causing us to live by the now outdated catchphrase, you only live once, also called YOLO for short, or the similar mentality that life is short? Maybe it does for some people, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, particularly when the sentiment behind it is to live each day as if it might be your last. 
But there is more that this reminder can do, especially when we are thinking and in the season of Lent. Beginning the season with a reminder that death is a part of the story is like an invitation to enter into it for the long haul. Enter into all the feelings and all the things that come with life and death. To be quite honest, as I was preparing this message, I struggled for a little bit because the things that I just said about death and YOLO just felt too light. Depending on the experiences of each person, talking about death can be much harder for some than others. And that can be based on the season of life that each person is in. And I want to be clear that that's okay. I think the very fact that we begin the season of Lent with this reminder of death demonstrates that we don't take it lightly. Yes, as followers of Jesus, we believe that Jesus' death and resurrection opened a way for all who believe to experience eternal life beyond just our life on this earth. But we also recognize that death is heartbreaking. It's confusing. It means someone or something is gone from our lives. In our culture, we tend to want to deny death or explain it away with simplistic phrases. These kind of give us an easy way out. But the season of Lent is a reminder and an opportunity to be in the heartbreak, the confusion, and the loss that comes with death. The 40-ish days of Lent are a way for us to actively walk alongside and engage each other and strengthen our compassion muscles to do this in this season, but also beyond this season. We can be in it for the long haul together as we experience experience these heartbreaks, these confusing things and loss. We don't have to settle for the easy answers because we have an opportunity to support each other through it. In this season of Lent, we don't have to go it alone. In the sermon seed section of our worship material, um, that just offers some helpful tidbits for those who are preparing the message. I was interested to learn that in the history of the church, the season of Lent was a time of preparation before baptisms, which would be then around Easter, the end of the Lent season. The particular focus for doing this was on a discipleship partnership and mentorship with other Christians further along in the faith journey. It was like to serve as a preview of the church family, which these baptism candidates would be joining and entering into. It was almost like they formed a covenant to show that they would be cared for and loved in the church. Though we may not do this kind of thing in a formal way, it's still important to us, and it is part of what we see with this scene that we've worked together to create this morning the scene of walking along the path together that we will ponder and think about for our Lent worship services. We go on this path together. And the psalm which we've read this morning is one that appears to be written from the perspective of an individual, but it addresses the path that has been taken, the path that we will encounter. By reading through the whole chapter this morning, we get a good idea that this person has made some undesirable choices at times, maybe even we would call them rebellious, but still the psalmist eagerly seeks God's guidance. We know this from the multiple references to God's path and God's wisdom. Our Bible memory verses are in there, verses four and five, and these are a prime example, but there are others as well. If you look at about the first 12 verses of the psalm, you'll see the word way or ways at least five to six times. And that count doesn't include similar words like paths and guide. This scripture is a perfect way to start out the Lenten season. It sort of summarizes our experience. We take time this season to remember our mistakes our wrongs and our sins. We confess these things to God. And we seek God's guidance and wisdom over our own also. 
but also at times we feel alone and defeated. Yet we are refreshed by the covenant and faithfulness of God. And in this season of Lent, like the psalm says, we embark on all of this with the Lord walking with us. There was one resource I saw that um, made a statement about this psalm that said, it is basically a cry for help interspersed with praise. Praise to God for being the sort of God who helps those in trouble. I like this statement because I see a connection between it and the title for our theme, the title or um, what you might say is our theme for today. The focus that we have on this first Sunday of Lent is repent and believe. The psalmist seems to follow a pattern in this prayer to God that at the core of it, I think, is saying, God, I repent. God, I believe. God, I repent. God, I believe. What a relief this is to all of us. Because rather than feeling hopeless when we don't follow Jesus perfectly or when we mess up, we do something wrong, we are reminded of this pattern repent and believe. And this is not just a pattern that emerged just from the poetry of this psalm. It's a pattern which we see demonstrated throughout history, throughout the biblical story. The Old Testament passage um, that is part of the lectionary for today, Genesis 9, verses 8 through 17, along with some of the old, other Old Testament passages that will um, follow in the next several weeks, show us this pattern. These passages, I would say, even take it a step further and include connecting a connecting piece between repent and believe. And that connecting piece is covenant. Let me explain more what I mean. The Old Testament passage from Genesis 9 is the end of the flood narrative. It's a time when people did wrong. From what we learn about Noah in previous parts of the story, it seems like Noah surely knew all the wrong that was being done around him. So though it seems he didn't do a formal repenting in the traditional sense of the word, perhaps he had a form of repentance by recognizing all that was wrong around him. And he certainly did believe. His belief is what drove him to act out and to build the ark and trust God that those 40 days of flood, 40 days and nights of flood would end. The portion of Genesis 9 verses 8 through 17, detailing God's covenant with Noah and all people and all creation to follow, is a chance for all generations reading the story to know that God's covenant is the point where repent and believe meet. The covenants of God address our imperfect humanity that does wrong to God and to each other, and our imperfect belief and faith in God, that God's love and partnership will not dwell on our sinful ways. It's the pattern of repent and believe, with God's trustworthy covenant of loving kindness bringing it together. At times, the writing and thoughts surrounding the season of Lent put quite a bit of focus on the individual person's experience. And this is something that I was becoming conscious of in some of the things that I've shared this morning. The psalm, after all, is an individual psalm. It's not a communal, communal psalm. But I was also aware of a reality that I've noticed, or I've seen this in um, various Lent traditions and ideas. Sometimes we use this season as a way to put ourselves in a place of sacrifice or denial so that we can kind of get a bit of an experience of what Jesus went through. While this can be helpful and serve a purpose, we also need to remember that the path of following Jesus, the season of Lent, is not about us. This season is a part of God's story throughout the whole Bible and God's great love shown in Jesus. So to help us focus on God more than us in this season, I wanna share with you something that I found um, from a pastor in Ohio. And he went, so he went through Psalm 25 and he came up with a summary list of attributes of God, which he compiled. 
and he called it, My God Is. I'm going to read this for you now. My God is trustworthy, the rewarder of those who wait for him, faithful to guide his own, the God of my salvation, compassionate, filled with loving kindness, forgiving, he remembers me, but not my sin. Good, upright, the instructor of sinners, provider of justice for the humble, teacher of the humble, companion of the lonely, caretaker of the afflicted, guardian and deliverer, a refuge, the redeemer. This is the God that we journey with through Lent. This is God who we trust who we proclaim, I repent and believe, and who leads us on. Perhaps a practice you might want to engage this season or this week would be to use Psalm 25 and maybe other scripture passages from the Lent season and do a similar thing like this pastor did, searching them for the attributes of God, who God is. Who is this God that we follow, that we are walking with, that we trust? I'd like to end with a story that draws on verse 10 from 25, and I'll read that verse for you again. It says, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. The story comes from David Roper of Our Daily Bread. He says, a fishing buddy told me about an alpine lake located high on the north flank of Jug Handle Mountain in Idaho. Rumor had it that large cutthroat trout lurked up there. So his friend got a pencil and napkin and he drew a map for him. Several weeks later, he got in his truck and set out to follow the directions. And he says the map put him on one of the worst roads he's ever driven. It was an old logging road that had been bulldozed through the forest and never regarded. There was washouts, fallen timber, deep ruts, and large rocks. It took half a morning to reach the destination. And when he finally arrived, he asked himself, why would a friend send me up a road like this? But he found out soon that the lake was magnificent and the fish were indeed large and scrappy. David learned an important lesson that day, that if we trust the one who leads us, shows us and guides us, we can keep on the way with the assurance of love and care. The one who leads us is not going to put us in a path that we shouldn't be on. Though there may be challenges, along the way. May these lessons and the words of this psalm guide us as we walk the path of Lent together with Christ among us. I'd like to end with a prayer from um, the back of Voices Together. You don't have to open it up. I will read it for us. Let's pray. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus now lead on. From the familiarity of what we know to the wonder of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To transform the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on. Because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead on. Amen. The song we sing will be number 505. We're going to sing all three verses, and only the first two verses made it to the PowerPoint, so you're going to have to open up your books today. Um, 505. Verse 2 is kind of our, our verse of repentance, as Jessica was talking about. And we'll sing verses one and two however you want. If you want to sing the melody or if you want to sing parts, you can. When we get to verse three, I'm going to ask you to do something we haven't done for quite a while. We're going to sing this in a round. 
So we're going to pause a little bit. We're going to start this side off singing verse 3, and I'll start this side over here um, at the end of the first full measure where it says 2. We're going to see how that goes. All praise to Thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me Thy Maker of all things beneath Thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, God, for this I pray. The Start this side first, and then I'll leave this side in. Praise God to the Everybody's looking up here. I think the verse is up. I learned that one time. You watch the eyes, you know, they, they'll, they'll tell you what's going on. So, Sam, don't try to trick me the next time I look at you this way. Part of the <clears throat> passage this morning is part of our memory verses. Let's read together. Show me your ways, Lord. Lord teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you. Psalms like 5, 4, and 5. I believe we have a sending song. And I think what we're going to do today is we're going to deviate from the, the bulletin. Sam, when you're finished, would you dismiss us? We know this tune, but we knew it, know it in a different time signature, but I think we can get it. We're going to sing the uh, refrain in verse 1, and back to the refrain then. It goes like this.
Go in peace.